Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Hannah Olson and I typically post about all things motherhood, homemaking, and even homeschooling. I live in Minnesota with my husband and our three children who are ages five and a half, three and a half, and almost five months. Today's video is all about what I packed in my hospital bag when I was expecting our third child, Svea. Like I said, Svea, our third born, is almost five months old, which means it's been five months, almost half a year since I gave birth to her. So I figured now is as good a time as any to sit down and share with you what I brought to the hospital in my hospital bag. And I'll comment on everything. I'll tell you everything I brought, but then I'll also comment on whether or not it got used and if I thought it was a really good purchase. Before I forget, since you're watching a video right now about what to pack for your hospital bag, feel free to also check out my blog, which has my birth stories for my other three children. I think I have my firstborn child's birth story on there, but if not, I at least have Soren, our secondborn, and Svea, our thirdborn's birth stories up there. I know I just wrote Svea's pretty recently, but be sure to check that out if you're interested in birth stories as well. I will link those below. Generally speaking, I love to be prepared, sometimes over-prepared, or I sometimes overpack. So that's why I wanted to comment on everything and really tell you whether or not I felt it was worth bringing to the hospital because you only have a limited amount of space and you just don't want to lug everything around when you are only there for such a short time. You really want to make sure you bring just the essentials. I feel like this third time around is when I really, really increased in my confidence as far as what I need for a baby, for a newborn, and what I didn't need to get. I know there's so many ideas swirling out there on the internet about what you really must have and all the essentials, and before you know it, the essentials just really add up for your wallet, but also they just load up your hospital bag and you really want to make sure you have what you need. So I hope this video today is helpful for you and let's jump into what I packed in my hospital bag. All right, let's start with the bag itself. I actually did, for our third baby, get a new bag. This looks kind of big here on camera and it is kind of large, but it's, it flattens out. It's a, a little overnight or maybe more of a weekender bag. And I got this off of Amazon. It was not too expensive and I had seen someone recommend it on Instagram and I thought it was a really cute bag, but also it looked really practical. Now in the past for my first two children, I actually packed one hospital bag for myself and one hospital bag for the baby. This time around, I tried to be a little more minimal and I packed just that one brown bag. It has since been a really great bag for us for traveling. So I'm really happy with that bag. I will link it down below in the description box for you. In order to pack everything in that bag for myself and then for Svea, I just put a lot of things in different Ziploc bags inside the duffel bag itself. So that's an easy and pretty inexpensive way to pack. You don't need all of the cute little smaller bags unless you already have those on hand. You can definitely just use Ziploc bags and that actually might work even better when you can easily label them. Okay, the first thing I packed in our hospital bag was a sound machine. This sound machine, I will insert a picture of it here because right now Svea is using the sound machine in the other room to nap with. That's how much we love it. It is a, I think, Dream Egg brand sound machine and we have loved that brand in the past. It's for it's the sound machine we use for Sophie and Soren in their room as well, but this one is a small travel one that charges really well with a with a cord, it's portable, and then it holds its charge extra long. So if you are giving birth in a hospital or just plain, you don't wanna hear all of the maybe machines or noises or beeping or all of those noises that kinda of keep you up throughout the night, definitely consider a sound machine even at the hospital. Something else I packed is an extra long phone charger cord for mom and for dad. So I have an iPhone, my husband has a, an Android phone, so I did pack two separate cords for both of us and they were used just like the sound machine was used. Our phone cords were definitely used because there aren't always outlets near you or you can't guarantee the placement of the outlets in the hospital room. So it helps to have a six foot phone charging cord and honestly it has helped me just even at home too. So I also brought makeup remover wipes which I mentioned in my 
recent video about my skincare and makeup routine. I have a pretty minimal skincare and makeup routine, but I did bring my little eye makeup remover wipes. They're from Neutrogena, but they're not the normal blue pack that you might have seen around. They are they come in tiny individually wrapped packs, which worked so well for me to bring to the hospital. I just threw a small handful of those into the hospital bag. That way I could remove eye makeup when I wanted to. Of course, some people aren't really applying and removing makeup in the hospital, but if you want to get some family pictures, I do recommend just at least throwing your makeup and makeup removing stuff in your hospital bag. They definitely got used for us. I brought contact solution as well as a contact lens case. Those are wonderful things to have on hand. I also brought my glasses. So just your normal things that you would have on your nightstand are always a good bet to bring to the hospital with you. The reason though I'm mentioning this contact case is I also brought one for my husband because he's a contact lens wearer as well and we just didn't want to have to remember to grab some of those things and they often come free you know from the eye doctor or inside your contact solution box so I just made sure to have extra contact cases already packed in our hospital bag. I also packed granola bars in the hospital bag. These were an item that actually did not end up being used at the hospital just because of the plentiful snacks and food options that were already there. I just wanted to have something on hand in case I got extra hungry or my husband got hungry. Turns out he wasn't that hungry. <laughs> it turns out I was very hungry and the hospital of course had lots of food options for me. I also packed a travel toothbrush and toothpaste. Those were definitely used. It just helps so much to have those already packed, you know, the travel sizes already packed in your hospital bag. And it helps a lot to help you feel more fresh in the hospital. Something I feel like I talk about all the time is this heatless hair curling ribbon. And I love this thing so much. Now my hair is not showing a lot of curl right now because we were at the pool this morning, but I love it so much. It helps you to feel put together with very, very minimal effort. I, you know, even one of the nights in the hospital, I was standing up in the bathroom quickly curling my hair before bed because first of all, it gets your hair out of the way just for sleeping. It's kind of the same feel as putting your hair up in a messy bun overnight. It's just, it results in more of waves for your hair. So I really would recommend that. I think it's a really great option for a new mom. It's a great baby shower gift too if you don't necessarily want to have it in your hospital bag. Definitely look into a heatless hair curling ribbon. I used it in the hospital. I love it so much and I continue to use it every day and I have for several years, a couple years now, at least a couple years. Another thing I brought was a large thermos and it's just one I personally got at Walgreens, although a Yeti or some large cup that can hold or keep your water cold would be wonderful to have. Now they do give you usually a big drinking glass with one of those signature big bendy straws at the hospital and a lot of people love those and drink out of them all of the time even when you get home from the hospital now for me i personally love keeping ice water cold i really love a cold beverage and so i felt it was useful or at least worth it to bring the cold thermos that i have from home and i did end up using it so you can kind of figure out what you would like. If you don't mind your water being more lukewarm or asking for ice refills all the time, uh, you can definitely use whatever they give you. But if you have room in your hospital bag, it is a good option to bring a thermos to keep any drinks cold. Something else I brought to the hospital was my trusty or my beloved Bluetooth speaker. I have a JB clip so I can actually hook it to the belt loop of my jeans as I do chores around the house or just prop it up somewhere in the kitchen, just set it on the kitchen table or anything. So my plan was to bring it to the hospital and then use it for my relaxing music playlist during labor and birth. However, I didn't have the chance. You can read Svea's birth story on my blog. I have always had fast labors and births and I didn't have the chance to play my relaxing, peaceful, soothing music. That's just how it goes. But I would still recommend bringing a Bluetooth speaker if you have created a little peaceful music playlist, if you don't know how long your labors typically go, or of course every labor tends to be different. For me, I've just found I don't have time to listen to the peaceful music. I would love to though, and I still think it's something worth putting in your hospital bag. 
I brought a Halo brand newborn Velcro swaddle. Now they have swaddles at the hospital, of course, and a lot of things they can recommend and give you, but I just loved ours that I used when Soren, our second born was a baby, and even for Sophie, but I think I remember wrapping Soren in a Velcro swaddle the most, and it did come in handy. I love those Velcro swaddles because there's no, there's not much of a learning curve in terms of getting those nice and snug, and they are easy to put on and to take off of your baby. It's always nice to have an extra swaddle just in case there's some kind of a spit up situation or a diaper mess. I personally liked having an extra swaddle with us, although it wasn't totally necessary, I did use it at the hospital. This next item you might find you disagree with me on, but I just wanted to mention it because it is something I brought in my hospital bag, and it's those silverette cups. They are made to help with breastfeeding and nipple sensitivity or pain. It can be a bit of a learning curve for some people when it comes to starting breastfeeding. And for me, I know that it always is a little more uncomfortable those first few days or even weeks. And it's just something to give yourself grace for and of course to reach out to a lactation consultant if you at all have the opportunity to. Now, those silverette cups, I was a little disappointed, pretty disappointed, because they are rather pricey and I did not find relief from them. I did not find that they helped me very much and it was something I tried new with this third baby, but it ended up not being worth it for me. Sorry, my camera's memory card got full. But I basically would prefer those Lansano brand Soothies gel pads. I love them because you can refrigerate them and use them several times and they're just a very nice cool kind of a dressing. Um, it's like a little circular pad for your breast while you are kind of learning or at least ramping up on breastfeeding with your newest baby. And something the hospital's lactation consultant brought to me was very similar to that, so you can definitely ask for something like that. The ones she brought were called wound dressing, actually, which sounds very dramatic, doesn't it? But they brought a lot of relief. So I'm sorry to say those silverette cups, which I had heard all about, did not do a whole lot for me. This did not come in the hospital bag, but we brought our car seat. We had that already installed in our van when we went to the hospital, and I'm glad we did that. It's something you wanna do well in advance of going into labor, just so that no one has to troubleshoot anything in the hospital parking lot later on. I brought my cell phone, of course. I also brought, let me show you, this is my beloved knee pillow. I use this every night, every single night, and I have since I was pregnant with our second child, and it is wonderful for when your hips are a little more sore postpartum or during pregnancy, pretty much any time. And for me, it did make a difference, and it was something I was glad that I had in the hospital so that I could at least try to get a little more comfortable in the hospital bed. I also brought my purse. That's just something you might wanna add in a little list off to the side of your hospital bag. So it's those last minute things that you can't really pack in advance, but that you need to have. So your purse and then also a cell phone. I brought a going home or a photo outfit for Svea and we had decided on her name in advance. So I ordered her a cute little onesie and pants set that had her name right across the chest from an Etsy shop and I will link down below where we got ours and maybe I'll insert a photo here of how she looked in her outfit. It was so cute and I really would recommend just throwing in a cute photo shoot type of outfit for your newborn. Of course, you'll probably just keep them in sleepers or little pajama outfits for much of the hospital stay, but I really think it's worth it to do a mini, mini photo shoot while you are in the hospital still. When I say photo shoot, I just mean you yourself taking photos with your cell phone. That's what I did. Now with our firstborn child, I just remembered with Sophie, she was not having it when we were trying to get her in her cute little hello world or whatever it was, her little personalized outfit when she was born. So her photos in the hospital are just like in her pajamas or something like that, which is totally fine, totally fine. But if you wanna have a darling little outfit, it's still worth it to just pop that outfit in your hospital bag. In terms of outfits for the newborn, I brought two or three sleepers, like long sleeve pajama outfits for Svea in the hospital. And in retrospect, I wish I would have packed one or two more because life happens and spit up happens and maybe you are changing the baby multiple times during the night or during the day, probably all of the time. And so if you've got room for a few of those tiny little pajama sets, just throw those in the hospital bag and I think you'll be glad you have some extra. 
something I have packed in the past for Sophie when she was born, our firstborn, and then also for Svea, our little head bows and headbands. I honestly haven't used them that much. We did have a headband as part of the personalized outfit set for Svea, and so we did use that headband for pictures, but honestly, I don't think I needed as many bows. I think I brought several bows, but I just didn't really need to bring any hair bows. I also packed a travel size hairbrush and I was glad I had that as well. I also packed some little baby hats, just some little knit hats. Now I ended up not using those. If you don't like those hospital style hats, you don't need to use them and you can bring some from home like I did. I just ended up liking the hospital ones just fine and even using those that they sent home with us afterwards. So it turned out I didn't need to bring any extra baby hats. I brought a handheld mirror. I always like to use one or keep one next to my nightstand anyway, but this is just an extra travel one that I had on hand and I just threw it in the hospital bag. I'm so glad I had it because it really helps if you do want to throw in a little bit of makeup while you are sitting in the comfort of your hospital bed, then you don't have to get up and it just helps to have a little mirror nearby. Another thing I packed was women's disposable underwear. I had heard rave reviews of packing these for the hospital and I wanted to give it a try for this third baby. So I got those Always Discreet uh, Boutique, I think. Anyway, I'll link it below so you know exactly what I got. But I really, I loved them for postpartum. I did not use them in the hospital. I just went with those hospital, you know, the underwear that everyone talks about. I just used what the nurses gave me. It worked out just fine. But I do have to say, while I didn't use them in the hospital, I would really recommend them for postpartum. I loved those. I went through a lot of them, of course, but I really thought the disposable underwear just helped a little bit more with feeling put together. I brought something called, it's spelled L-M-N-T drink mix. I think it's pronounced element. That's what I would pronounce it as. So I drink element drink mix every day. It's a pretty high sodium, but also electrolytes kind of drink mix. I love it so much. It helped me stay hydrated throughout pregnancy and also postpartum, but I didn't drink it too much in the hospital. I did make probably one drink packet while I was there. So if you want a drink mix, something to mix things up, change things up from whatever beverages they have at the hospital, I would recommend just throwing a couple drink mixes in your hospital bag too. I also brought my Beauty Counter Travel Size skincare regimen. I love it. It's the Counter Time regimen, which is for anti-aging, and it just helps me to feel like I'm taking good care of myself even while in the hospital, and it includes my cleansing oil, which I use to wash my face morning and night. So I definitely used that and I was really glad I did. I think it just helps you feel a little more put together to bring some of your home skincare options. The final thing I've got on my list here is my travel size dry shampoo. This is the dry shampoo brand I use normally and I love it so much. It's a little bit different than some that go on almost as an aerosol spray, if you know what I mean. But this one I've used for a long time after I kind of transitioned away from the Dove brand. I found this one on Amazon and I've been pretty happy with it. So that's the brand that I also packed in my hospital bag. That's it for today's video. I hope it was helpful for you to get a peek or a virtual peek inside my hospital bag for my third baby. Hopefully it gave you some good ideas and really helped you to feel confident in terms of having truly what are the essentials. Of course, you'll want to use your own discretion when it comes to what you want in your own personal hospital bag. I just hope that this video was helpful to you in terms of getting some fresh ideas and some increased confidence for you as a mom. I would be so honored if you would give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel here. You can also follow along with me over on Instagram, which is at Hannah B. Olson, and also over at justbeblog.com, which is my blog and website. I also have an online motherhood and homemaking course, and I would be so thrilled if you would consider joining us when it opens for enrollment once again. Be sure to look down in the description box and join the waitlist for that course. Hope you're having a wonderful day wherever you're at and I'll see you in my next one. Yesterday